metabolic alkalosis metabolic alkalosis from my issue point of view remember whenever bicarbs are more than 26 you need to uh, uh, look for 90 95 90% of the time which low two pepetiologies are there one is hypovolemia contraction alkalosis in which you give flu second is hypokalemia for which it will respond with potassium supplement rather than fluid so assess the volume so hypovolemia is the most common cause of um uh, metabolic alkalosis which is flu responsive and where there is no hypovolemia hypokalemia is one of the major cause if these two are not the cause you look for other etiologies and to assess the volume status don't look for the urine spot sodium in the uh, uh, urine look for uh, spot uh, chloride this will give you a better idea uh, whether my patient is flu responsive or Food responsive. If urinary chloride less than twenty, usually it's an hypovolemia. If urinary chloride is more than twenty, it is usually unresponsive to fluids. No hypovolemia. Fluid responsive, fluid responsive. Respiratory acidosis and alkalosis. It is very easy, but you need to know the causes. In this particular thing, causes are more important. So, why normal and I'm alveolar uh, arterial gradient means lungs are normal high means lungs are normal lungs are normal lungs are normal so as respiratory acidosis means we are having increased pco2 patient is not uh, patient respiratory is little bit low patient is hypoventilating so normal lungs uh, and it's an acute event so causes could be depression of central respiratory centers by narcotics epileptic encephalitis trauma benzodiazepines because lungs are normal it's just a uh, patient is hypovolemic if it is an acute but lungs are abnormal so it can be occur due to acute exacerbation of asthma and copd if this is a chronic disease chronic means patient he has been hypoventilating for longer period of time but lungs are normal so you can have gbs type of syndrome myasthenia all these things uh okay and if your lungs are abnormal lungs are normal and pa patient is retaining pco2 to so copd is one of the most common cause now alkalosis means sorry uh this means you you have decreased pco2 means patient is hyperventilating now patient can be acutely hyperventilating or chronically hyperventilating so if it is acutely hyperventilating with lungs normal most common cause in the icu is anxiety neurosis then you can have trauma pain but what we see usually stroke patient at times or anxiety neurosis patients now patient can be hyperventilating but lungs are abnormal so most common cause is pulmonary embolism pulmonary edema this is the most common thing abnormal lungs and patient is hyperventilating pneumonia pulmonary edema pulmonary embolism aspiration congestive heart failure etc 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 now patient is hyperventilating for a longer period of time more than 24 hours with lungs normal i told it told you pregnancy hepatic failure obese patients can obese patient can present in both ways whether the osa component is dominating or the obesity component is dominating so it, at times they can present with the co2 retainers or we can present with hyperventilation depends on the physique and multiple factors hyperparathyroid patient usually have a respiratory rate little faster so they will a chronic thing with normal area chronically lungs are abnormal and patient is hyperventilating so it can happen in pulmonary embolism with pregnancy and uh, liver failure with aspiration pneumonia so you can have pregnant lady who's, who got pneumonia you can have cirrhotic patient who got some lung etiology so now it's chronically hyperventilating with lung abnormal so that's the way you should approach always remember one more thing this is very very important whenever you see a patient in which you are looking at the pco2 so pco2 pco2 should always be seen in conjunction with ph you have seen that pco2 is high but the ph is normal don't worry about don't panic in that it means it's chronic one if your pco2 is risen acutely and ph has dropped then it is a matter of concern so you see if pco2 is high and ph is low it is either acute or acute on chronic respiratory acidosis your pco2 is high and ph is somewhere uh between 7.3 to 7.4 then it is a chronic one means ph will normalize in the chronic one ph will normalize in the chronic one if it is an acute etiology 
pH will norm normalize. Either it will go down or either it will go up. So if pH is high, your PCO2 is uh, low, then it's a acute respiratory alkalosis. Your pH is down and your PCO2 is high, it's an acute or acute and chronic. But if pH is normal and PCO2 changes are there, so either it's a chronic respiratory acidosis or chronic respiratory alkalosis. Compensation always. Uh, there are different formulas for compensation, so th that I will not discuss. But what I want to tell you, okay, I'll take this one also. Uh, in compensation, what what compensation means that whenever there is a abnormality in one of the component, whether acid component or PCO two component, your body other mechanism try to compensate and bring back the pH to a normal range because they are not concerned with the P Bica or PCO2, they want that pH of the body should be between 7.35 to 7.45, which is very important for maintaining the uh, milieu in the blood or in the tissues. So if there is a metabolic component derangement, metabolic acidosis, to compensate respiratory takeover, it can acute and it could chronically. If it is an acute respiratory component, the metabolic component takeover. The only thing is rap, uh, lungs act faster, kidneys act slower. So that's why lungs are rabbit and kidneys are tortoise. So kidneys don't adapt to uh, very fast. They take some time. So just remember this formula. If there is a metabolic acidosis for each fall in bicarb, your PCO2 fall by 1 to 1, 1 to 1.5 times. If it is a metabolic alkalosis, for each PCO2 rise, PCO2, uh, what will happen? Metabolic alkalosis, bicarb will rise, so PCO2 will rise. So PCO2 rise will be 0.5 to 1. So suppose your normal bicarb are 24 and your PCO2 uh, normal, uh, normal bicarb is 24 and your P, uh, bicarb now drops to 20. So 4 is the drop. It's a metabolic acidosis. So how much bicarb will, how much PCO2 will drop? 1 to 1.5 means 4 to 6. So 40 minus 4 to 6, uh, 36 to 34 will be the PCO2 range. Same way. And this, this is for uh, respiratory disorder. Acidosis, alkalosis, you can make a chart uh, right here. Acidosis, alkalosis, and acute and chronic. For every 10 change in the PCO2, either in the above direction and the below direction, if it is acute one, one change in the bicarb, it is, it's a chronic one, three change in the bicarb, it's an alkalosis. For every 10 change, either it's two change or five change. So you can take a screenshot of this and you can read in this. But one thing is very important, compensation never overshoots the primary disorder. You can have a metabolic acidosis and to compensate the patient develop respiratory alkalosis, but respiratory alkalosis per se will never shoot the metabolic acidosis. The primary disorder will always remain. The compensatory mechanism will try to bring the pH somewhere around normal 7.3, 7.36 uh, or that way, but it will not cross 7.4. So we need to pick what is the primary disorder and what is the compensatory disorder. Again, uh, uh, in a nutshell, what we've seen, always think why you have done an AVG, what you are anticipating, what action you will take when the report comes, comment of oxygen, PF ratio, ventilation status, look for PCO2, and the acid-base disorders and correlation and summing up. So that's all.